Hello and welcome to Visa Port Educational Videos by Hassan Ahmed. Currently we are working on O-Level Physics and the course code is 5054. Today our topic is topic number 8 which is energy sources and transfer of energy. In short, it's energy and this is lesson part 2. In this lesson, the learning objectives we will be looking at are 3 and it's I, M and J. First of all, let's look at I. In this learning objective, we will define work done. So first of all, work done is defined as the distance covered by an object due to the application of force in the same direction. Yes, here the same direction is very important. Because if we look at any other direction, in terms of if we look at the perpendicular direction, then it's not work done anymore, but actually it becomes moment. And if you have done the topic number five of CIE, which is turning effect of forces, you must have gone through this concept as well. So in work done, remember that whenever we talk about force and distance, the distance has to be parallel to the force. For example, right here you have a block. I've just highlighted this block here and uh, if we apply force so it should move in the direction of the force so for example if I apply force towards right hand side you must have noticed that it's moving also towards right hand side so distance covered by this box or this block is towards right hand side hence some work now the SI unit of work done is joules you must be thinking that, wait a minute, the joules is the unit of energy. Yes, we will look into it in a couple of minutes. Uh, but first of all, let's understand how does this joules come into play. So work done is equal to force into distance. And we know that the SI unit of force is newtons. And for distance, it's meters. Together, newton into meter gives us the unit which is gel, joules and represented by capital J. Now as we can say that work done can also be considered as output when energy is used as an input. In the first part, if you remember I said for any work to be done, energy is the cause. So if I'm recording this video, you are listening to it or maybe we are lifting some object or even writing on a piece of paper that is some work and to do that work in, in very basic or layman understandings if to do that work we need energy as an input so yes that is why that is why the energy and work done have same SI unit that is joules so it's just two sides of the same coin if we look at it Let's do some calculations uh, to make more clear what work done is meant to be. So not any kind of activity will be considered as work done unless the distance covered is in the same direction. So here we have this, this kid uh, who is very uh, brotherly playing with his sister and trying to push or applying force to this, this cart or this toy car. So when he applies force of let's assume 50 newtons towards the right, the cart or the car moves towards right as well. And it covers the distance of 20 meters. All we need to do is use the formula F into D, apply the values and get our answer. Remember newton into meter, if the direction is of the distance is same as force, we can say that's work done, which is 1000 joules. Now let's move to the next learning outcome which is about power and that's learning outcome or learning objective B. Not B sorry, it's M. Okay, so the first formula of power, remember for power we have three formulas. So the very important one we'll be looking at this one which is called power is equals to work done upon time. As we know that work done is equals to force times distance. So we will understand how this works. But before we understand this, uh, we also need to know that the SI unit of power is watts. So whenever we listen or we hear the word watt, 
we should understand we are talking about power, whether it's electrical or mechanical power. So that is the power unit, which is watts represented by capital W. Now, this thing, the horsepower, is also a unit of power, but it is not system international unit, and this is not the part of O-level syllabus. But I'm just telling you as an interesting information so that you can understand how this unit works, because a lot of the cars, the powerful cars, the turbo sports cars, their engines are defined or rated as horsepower engines. So uh, 3,500 horsepower engines or something like that. So uh, once you understand this, you'll be able to figure out how powerful uh, your car engine is. So in, in old methods or old times, the horse was used as a symbol of power. So to measure it, it was set as one horsepower. One horsepower would be equals to 735.5 watts. Now, how does that calculation come into play with our equation, which is power is equals to force into distance? So let's have a look. So it was said that if a horse can lift a block of 75 kilogram mass. And as a student of physics, you should know by now that if its mass is 75 kilogram, its weight will be 750 newtons due to the gravity. So if this horse can lift this block of 75 kilogram or 750 newtons up to one meter height in one second, up to one meter height in one second, so that means this power is one horsepower and if we multiply these values we get our answer which is 750 watts uh, but that is because we are using the value of gravity as 10 uh, if I just quickly use the different pointer uh, to write down these values I'm using laptop uh, pad it's not uh, the the computer mouse so please bear with me with the with the rough writing here but I hope this will make you understand what I'm trying to say so if I say that power is equals to force multiplied by distance divided by time now as I said that to find out the force we have the mass given which is 75 kilograms I'm gonna ignore the unit because it's so tedious to write with this this mouse pad so if I multiply this 75 with 9.8 which is the value of gravity 9.81 I'm just gonna yes the point 9.81 and then I multiply this with one meter distance because that's the distance value and if I divide it by time which is one second so the answer I will get is 735.5 watts and that is how one horsepower as a unit was defined and it is still used for car engines as I said earlier so now with this interesting information I hope uh, you can tell someone that if they are saying that their car engine is this much horsepower you can tell what it is equivalent in terms of watts and how does actually it works to talk about the power formulas one more thing we need to understand is that input and output power so whenever we are talking about power is equals to energy upon time since energy is used as input phenomena so this is usually the input power we are giving for any activity we are using for any activity or any system for any work to be done and whenever we use the formula power is equals to work done upon time this is the useful output power because work done is considered as output hence this formula will always give us 
the useful output power. Why I'm saying useful is because in real world situations, some power or some energy gets lost. Uh, it gets wasted. It transforms into other forms of energy, undesired form of energy, which, um, which, which is kind of a waste. That is something we're going to understand in next upcoming slides under the efficiency topic. But that is why I'm saying this as useful output power. Now, the third formula comes from this work done formula. If I say that, if I break split work done into force into distance. So you can see here that this distance upon time, this distance upon time is known as speed. So we can also say that power is equals to force into speed. That is the third formula for power. So if in your paper, or if in your CIE exam, you are given values which are based upon speed and force, you do not need to worry. You just simply use this formula and calculate the power. So all these three formulas will be based upon uh, the given circumstances and situations. And that is the useful output power. Let's, let's move to the next slide. Now we are going to understand the last learning objective of this lesson, that is efficiency. Now, what is efficiency? Uh, this is my definition. It's not 100% correct as I don't want to be blasphemous in terms of physics terminologies, but this is what I understand and this is what uh, I can define in, in very simple words that efficiency is a measure of wastage of energy or power in terms of percentage so that it can be avoided by improving the system. Uh, usually efficiency tells that how much energy is or how much input power is getting converted into useful power. So it's the remaining percentage which tells us that how much energy is being wasted and we need to and that that basically gives us inclination or that gives us uh, alert that we need to improve our system uh, so that our system gets more and more efficient now this diagram may be helpful so in this we have a system right uh, in the middle you can see here this is a system or process you can you can um, imagine any any electrical appliance in your mind you can imagine any crane or any part of process where we have to give some energy as an input and we take energy as output so even if you are talking about a light bulb so a light bulb can be put here as a system and you know that electrical energy comes in light bulb and we get um, light energy as as an output so there's always some 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 types of loss or some type of wastage so in here if we give some energy as input so there will be some loss here there will be some losses here and due to these losses we will never get the same amount of output and that is where the efficiency comes in we need to calculate this value and tell our engineers or technicians that look our system is not that much efficient or it's it's not giving that much output and we want more and more uh, improvements in our system uh, so that is where your technician or engineer can get some values and work upon it so here we can say that we will get energy output and definitely it's not exactly the same as we uh, gave in this energy output can also be referred as work done in terms of output as we said that work done can be considered as output or sometimes you also can calculate using efficiency uh, while talking about the power so rather than talking about energy or work done we can say we have this much power as input and we are getting this much power as output what would be our efficiency so let's have a look how we would put this these values or these physical quantities and get the efficiency of a system. For the, before the formula, we need to understand that efficiency is represented by a Greek letter eta, and that is written as n with, a, with, with an extended leg, right extended leg. So this, this, this thing over here is eta. So eta is equals to output useful work done divided by input energy 
multiplied by 100. This will give us the value for the efficiency of system. Or we can also use output useful power divided by input power into 100. Remember, whenever we are talking about efficiency of any system, theoretically it's always output upon input. That's the very simple formula. Always is going to be output upon input multiplied by 100. So whether we are given energy or work done, we need to sort them in such form. We are given power, we need to also sort them in such form that output will always come in the numerator, in the upstairs, and the input will always come in the denominator, the downstairs of the fraction. I have not used many images in this video, although there were some, and uh, these are the credits for those images. And do subscribe my channel. Hopefully, there will be more videos for you uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Enjoy learning. Have a nice day. Bye.